The ruling all-progressive Congress APC accuses the People's Democratic Party PDP of playing dangerous politics with banditry. And on the issue of rejection of the Electoral Act Amendment Bill, the Senate holds action to override President Mohamedou Buhari. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anakon. The All Progressive Congress APC has accused the People's Democratic Party, PDP, of playing dangerous politics with banditry. APC, in a statement by the National Secretary of its caretaker, Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, Senator John Akbanodoyidege, noted that suggestions by the PDP that President Muhammad Buhari's administration was insensitive to the activities of bandits in the parts of the country should be seen as politically motivated, callous, and insensitive to victims and troops. The ruling party stated that the fact that the PDP was playing politics with the activities of bandits and insurgents, which had their formative stages during the PDP's reign, exposes the party as unpatriotic. Now, earlier in the week, we noticed that the PDP had accused the APC of being insensitive to the plight of Nigerians. So joining us to discuss this is um, a legal practitioner, of course, Sir Abdul Hamid. Um, Tunji Abdulami, thank you very much, Tunji, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yes. Good evening. Tunji, this uh, back and forth between the APC and the PDP has been ongoing. Now, I don't know if you have been following the news of the uh, protests that have been going on in the north. Just a few days ago, what am I saying? Just yesterday, Mr. President was in Borno. Just before he got there, there was an explosion. Um, and we've seen a line up of, of these activities happening back and forth. Uh, let's leave the APC and the PDP out of it. Let's look at the administration and how they've um, handled the issue of banditry or even fighting terrorism in the country. What's your score? Uh, I think uh, I'll score the government 20%. They've done badly and poorly in terms of uh, security. They, they promise a lot, but they deliver little. I have not seen what they have done in terms of security. And as far as I'm concerned, once the government failed in terms of security, it has failed in totality. There is no, there is nothing regarding that. You know, before, when the government came in, we have only one uh, uh, security. By, is it Boko Haram or something? And when they came, we have so many of them now. They, we have banditry, we have uh, S-men, we have this and that, and they, they are just growing from one. Uh, uh, in confidence now in that world. They are growing in confidence because they now they now attack the way they like. You can see yesterday, the president was in Bonu State and before he, uh, before his face, they, 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 they did their, their, their hearts. Uh, I think the government has performed badly in terms of security. Talking about the politicization of this issue, because of course the, it's the, um, you know, it's a, he said, you said, she said, you know, pointing of fingers between okay. the APC and the PDP. But let's look at the politicization of this issue. Now, when banditry began, the government refused at some point to deal with it head on. But then, of course, we saw reactions at different points. I remember when uh, the governor of uh, Ondo State um, said that there was no, there was, they put a ban on open grazing, especially on government grazing areas for, for these so-called bandits uh, at the time. And they were saying, um, and then the government reacted. We also saw, you know, pockets of these violence and people were asking that the government took a stand of sorts at the time to deal with the issue. But then nothing was really done. Uh, but then it was also an opportunity for the PDP to look good in the eyes of the average Nigerian. So if the APC is saying that the PDP is politicizing the issue, can the same be said about the APC? Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand what they mean by politicizing the issue. Because if there is no opportunity for, for them to, 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 to criticize or or play politics, they won't play it. If you have been, been proactive in terms of uh, providing security, if you have been pro proactive in terms of uh, doing the needful, if you have been proactive in terms of uh, curtailing the what, what you call, in quotes, what you call, uh, what's it called, banditry. I, I don't know what is banditry. I don't know who are those that uh, they call banditry. Uh, they are all criminal as far as I'm concerned. In fact, I, I want to believe that uh, what we call banditry today, I mean, I probably 
see the, the former Boko Haram or some of them that transform into this uh, banditry or, or, or war. But they give them that banditry name in an attempt to trivialize the, 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 what they are doing. So I, I don't, as a situation whereby the government will have sympathy for those committing crime. Why, why can't you say they, they, that means you are, you, they, they are compromised, as far as I'm concerned? Because uh, we have seen a situation whereby a governor will come and give excuses why people are committing crime. We have seen a situation whereby members of the cabinet of the president will give excuses of why they are committing crime. Even the president has, give, has, has given excuses as to why people are committing crime. So if you, are, if you can be doing that, what, the, what else do we call it? We call it sympathy for those who are committing crime. And so as far as I'm concerned, whether they are playing police or not, the question is, is there insecurity? Yes, as far as I'm concerned. Has the government done enough to curtail this insecurity? No, as far as I'm concerned. So if you say that, how, how, how are you paying for this? Just like uh, Ed Vice said that then, don't give us the room to play politics. Fix the insecurity. When you fix the insecurity, we will not uh, play, play game with you. But then there has been a lot of politicking around this issue and tiptoeing, of course, um, remember when we, the media, had been told not to call them a certain name or, um, you know, tag them, you know, a certain ethnic group, which it's all fair and well. Um, but then the, the, the activities of these people were not addressed as terrorism. Now a court of competent jurisdiction has said these people have been declared terrorists. Where is the government in dealing with this issue or following in that light to make sure that terrorists are being clamped down on, especially the ones that are dealing with our people and killing them in their numbers? Uh, you, you see, I, I, I am not even concerned about whatever they, they tag them, whether terrorists, whether bandits, whatever. What I'm concerned about is about the government being active in terms of uh, uh, ensuring that there is security in the country. So what, what, there's nothing in the name. If you call them here, whatever you call them, I am not doing anything. Yeah, they can see. Can, can, can I just quickly ask, come in there? It does matter, doesn't it? Because if you are, if a group of people are, are tagged bandits or thieves or, you know, unknown gunmen, they're not necessarily um, terrorists. So you cannot necessarily uh, attack them as you would attack terrorists without being, um, you know, having our soldiers or security uh, agents, um, you know, tagged human rights abusers. So it does really matter if you look at it realistically, doesn't it? Yeah, I agree, to, I agree with you to an extent, but what I'm trying to say is that, look, whether or not you call them uh, terrorists or whatever, it is, it is what you do that matters. Since the day they've been declared terrorists, what has, what has changed? Nothing. So what is the difference? That's what, I'm, that's what I'm talking about. So it's not about, we are told that they were not being attacked by, they're not using a, to kind of get against them because they are not a terrorist. Now they've been declared terrorists. We are not hearing the use of the, of the, of the, of the to kind of uh, get on them or anybody. So we, are, we just put the to kind of get, we just kept them somewhere, they are just resting and enjoying themselves there. We just wasted money as far as I'm concerned. So you know that well, if the government is not proactive in terms of uh, providing security, there is nothing you can do. What well, I was criticized, whether even, even those who are not uh, uh, from PDP, who are other, or, uh, ordinary Nigerians, once you criticize the government, and that is the problem we have in this country. A government, once the government does not want you to criticize them, but once you, once you criticize, and the government does say criticism as, a, as, a, as, as, as politics, they won't, there won't be solution. Government must accept the reality that they are not doing well in terms of providing security. Until, until they accept that, that's when they would say, we have a problem here. But when the government is deceiving itself to say, we have done enough to provide security in the country, then you can't get a solution. You must tell yourself the truth, agree with what people are saying, find a way around it, look for a solution, and then move forward. But if you are denying it, there can't be a solution to that, to that, to that insecurity as far as I'm concerned. It appears the government is, is compromised if you are trying to give excuses for why people are committing crime. Talking about compromise, that's because where I, the people... Whether it's whether terrorists... You are, they are all criminal. Well, talking about um, being complicit or, you know, being part of it, uh, this is where the PDP comes in. The PDP is saying that the silence on the part of government in terms of placing value on the lives of people who have been, the lives that have been lost over, you know, time due to this issue of so-called banditry, um, government seems not to, you know, place value on those lives. He's saying that the silence seems to be some form of, um, you know, collaborative one. And that's why they're saying the government is complicit. Again, I mean, I want to know exactly from your, I mean, perspective, why you think there is a challenge with government dealing with this issue? Because everybody is asking the same question. What do you think the challenge is? Nigeria does have great security forces. We have a great joint task force. We have a police that is questionable, but of course, they, they, they try to keep the peace to some extent. But could it be political will? Could it be the lack? I don't know. I'm trying to understand. What do you think the challenge is? This is, this is Christmas Eve. We're still talking about 
the level of insecurity. A bomb went off yesterday, almost before the president landed in Borneo State. And we're celebrating Christmas. How safe are we in this country, really? It might not necessarily be those of us who are in Lagos or in Abuja, but what about the people who are at the lines, uh, you know, where these banditries or whatever, these terrorist activities are taking place? Uh, you see, like I said, uh, political way is one of the reasons. Ethnic uh, sentiments, religious sentiment and other sentiments are part of the reasons. Uh, because, you know, the, the political way says that, look, all this why people have been people are killing people, and we have been told people have been arrested, and we have not seen anybody in court or being been punished or being or facing criminality, uh, criminal charge in court. You see, we are doing the same thing the same way, and we are expecting different results. There's no way we can, can have a, can have a different result. One, we, there's no political will. Two, we are not doing enough in terms of providing uh, 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 adequate facility for those, or even welfare for those who are fighting the war. In other words, the militaries are, are that are fighting the war, those who are, who are, who are, in the, who are, the, are complaining about their welfare. If you don't take care of those who are fighting, there's no way they will give their full or all to the fight. We are not having enough, uh, we don't have enough, uh, what's it called, uh, personnel. And the little we have are being used in a different, in a way that, that will not help the society. For instance, now, we have insecurity in the country where so many people are looking for us, people that will give them security. Then we have over 100, 100 uh, armed policemen and the, uh, uh, what's it called, mobile policemen in Magodo Estate, sitting there for, 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 for four days. They are sitting there, sitting there, doing nothing. And we have areas where they need security, and they are there doing civil matter and civil thing and and, and, and stay put. So when when we start to do things the same way, we can't get results. And as far as until, like I said earlier on again, until government realizes the fact and accept the fact that look, we are not doing well, we are failing this responsibility, and think other otherwise, then we can we, we may not move forward because the government is deceiving itself. Because the time they say they, 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 they the the or whatever has been disseminated, they've killed them, they've uh, attacked, them, they've, they've sent them away. I think I'm, I'm sure they have not done anything. They, 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 those who are committed to the crime have changed their tactics, but the government is not changing its tactics. Um, talking about that, um, the governor of Kaduna State recently was in the news talking about the fact that there are no repentant um, terrorists. That the only way they can repent is when they go to their creator, obviously, after they've been killed. Uh, and um, a lot of you resonated with most people, even though some people were criticized it. Uh, but then there are people who also sympathize with these bandits, like the, the likes of Sheikh Gumi, who has been taking health care, who's been taking education to these bandits. And every time I talk about this, it makes me wonder how he's able to quickly get access to them, but our security agents are unable to reach these people and decimate them. He's making a case for them. The last time I spoke with him, he said that these people, um, uh, they rose up as a, uh, as, a, uh, as a result of poverty, lack of education. They've been abandoned by the government. So really, and the government here might not necessarily be just the Buhari administration. We're talking about, you know, subsequent governments we've had in this country. Should the government not be starting at the root cause of this problem instead of, um, you know, putting a plaster on the cancer? Yeah, I, that, that's exactly the point I, I, I was making, that uh, as long as we allow sentiment and religious sentiment, as other sentiments to, to be clawed our responsibility, we may not get it to any way. A situation whereby you, you see people killing people that have killed so many people, they are arrested and they, you are told, we are told they are being considered for amnesty. They are being considered for, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, motivation or give them something, allowances or something for them to, to reset to and life. And those who have been killed or those whose family, the relative of those who have been killed are still languishing in what they call IDP. And then nothing else is being done to, to, to serve it. I don't know the difference between whether they, those who are committing crime are more valuable to the family than more than those, those who, are, who, are, who are victims of even their acts. Because as it is today, they, take, they, 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 they consider their plight more than that of the, those who are not even a, the criminal, the victim itself. You see, that, that is the situation where we, we find ourselves. So until those areas are, are corrected, we may not be able to get to anywhere. How the do issue we is get that, like those I said, areas we, corrected? How do we force the hand? I, I really don't want to use that word, but how do we really force the hand of this government? Because we keep talking about lack of political will, but there is political will to do with other issues that benefit our leaders directly, especially the politicians. Why is there no political will to deal with issues that are killing Nigerians in their numbers? The numbers have become just numbers these days. No more value added. It's just become normal headlines on our national dailies. So where do we go from here? And that is what, the point is that, look, it, there's, it, it's, it's about political way. I, you and I cannot go and then and start taking a decision against those who are killing. Those in government that they want to, 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 to take action. And if they're not, they're not willing to do, the, to do that, what, what, what do we do? 
we have to put pressure on them. But even when you put pressure on them, I know it's been done because when a country whereby those in government see themselves as a semi go and they are they are alpha and omega, they consider themselves as second to, to, to none and they have the power to do and undo. We are in this country when people who are who enter into civil contracts by borrowing money from bank who are being harassed, and why those who are and their name being published for the, by, by the fact of a name as shame. But those who are, are committing crime. The 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 after the other federation is telling us they can't publish their name because it will be contrary to the law. Uh, you, can, you can see the contra contradiction in that regard. So if you are protecting the criminals, you are giving them more courage to, to do more, and that's why we are, we are where we are today. So we need to the government is it's also it's, it's bothers on the government. It's government. The security is is, is is on the on the on the uh, on the head of the government, and the government should do more. There is nothing we can do than to, to talk and put pressure on the government, and so that and that's the only thing we can do. Except if we, I, I I'm, I'm very sure. That we are in a country where government don't, those in government don't resign, those in government don't, uh, uh, those the national House Assembly or National Assembly don't impeach governor or or, 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 or president for violating the criminal. Because as far as I'm concerned, like the insecurity we have in this country is violation of the constitution. Because the basic responsibility of government is welfare and security. Section 14 is very clear in that regard, and that, that has been violated as it is today. And in, in, a, in a civilized country, the, the president will have resigned or will have been impeached. But in our own country, it's excuse, 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 excuse for them. Finally, before I let you go, um, yes, you said in civilized country, and we're, we're in 2021, these leaders visit these so-called civilized and progressive countries, and they speak and talk tough, and they sound all grand and dandy, but they come back here and do the same old, same old. Um, I don't know. You're a, you're a lawyer, and some people complain about the slow, um, you know, delivery of justice by our uh, judicial processes in Nigeria. There are also people who say that even the instruments of democracy have been clamped down upon, so it puts the hand of the average Nigerian behind their backs, sometimes even maybe cuffed. And so it looks like we're on, even oh, unable to put pressure on our government. So how do we even start? Where do we even start to that deal with That is the point. We, we can't even we can't put all the blame on the judiciary. It's, 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 it's the same judiciary that's been controlled by the executive. It's, it's the same judiciary that's been victimized by the, by the, by the executive. It's, it's, it's the same judiciary that's been harassed by the, by the, by the, by the executive. So we, we are in a mess in the country in all, all, all aspects. The justice just system is not working because there is no independent mind. Justice system is not working because you are not free to do what you want to do. Because some, when you are, when, because the, the executive controls the security agency of the, uh, in the country and they use it to harass other people who are trying to check them. If you are a member of the Assembly now, you are trying to say the government is not doing this well, it's not doing that well. The next thing you see is that you see EFCC or, or other agency of the government looking at, running after you, rightly or wrongly. Should that, so that, that, that make our politicians have the their people, hands clean? Everybody, because there is that saying that those who have to come to equity have to come with clean hands. So if, if, if the EFCC or whatever is released on them, they should make sure that they have no skeletons in their cupboard. Before you point a finger, you should be ready for the aftermath. So should that also not, the onus not be on our politicians to have a clean slate? I'm not saying there's no, I'm not saying they can't pursue them. But what, what I see most times is that it's only when you criticize the government or when you talk against the government that they, they go after you. And at the end of the day, nothing will come out of the out of the case. Dino Milai, they, they went after him so many times. Saraki was went after them so many times. So many of them like that, they are all free now because they are nothing against him. So I'm, I'm telling you, they may have uh, something, uh, uh, but the, when, when you are in government and when you are enjoying the government, you do nothing, you can't do anything wrong. As far as they're like concerned, they see you as a member of the party and member of their caucus, and then they, they protect you. So you're in a situation whereby we have inequality and the laws are being applied in di differently. Then you, that, that society cannot grow. We cannot, we cannot survive this situation. So what we need to do is to, to apply the law the way it should be applied. We need to do things the way it should be done. Because you see, when we say judiciary, 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 it's not, the evidence is not about judiciary. For a judiciary to give a, a deliver judgment on the matter and, 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 and do justice in the matter, the prosecutor, particularly in criminal matter, the prosecutor who is under the executive must present proper case. Are they doing that? Are they, bring, are they giving us, are they doing proper investigation? Are they presenting proper, uh, uh, solid uh, case before the courts? For the court not to, 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 to for the accused not to, to have a way to escape. Sometimes when they drop their charge, you see the charge are, are with loopholes. Sometimes I, I think it's deliberate to, to give room for that person to escape. Sometimes it's a it's, a, it's, it's, it's incompetent on the part of those who are doing it. But nobody will be punished. So if you are not punished for, for wrongdoing, you continue to do it. So in, we're in a country where we condone everything. And that's why and when, when, when anybody say the government is condoling uh, criminality, I will not I will not blame that person. You are right to say it because they, it, it appears so. Because you are not doing the right. How can you? How can you even think of uh, 
give you amnesty to those who have killed people. As far as I'm concerned, those are the reasons why we are not moving forward. We need to do away with all this so that we can move forward. Well, Tunji Abdulhamid is a legal practitioner. We want to thank you very much. Uh, and we're going to have you on our next segment. But uh, stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back after this break. And we will be talking about the Senate's move uh, to override President Buhari if it's a go or a no-go. Stay with us. <laughs>